Okay, everyone, so the um, this is actually going to be the last section of chapter three. So we're looking here at um, drawing what are called energy level diagrams, uh, creating electron configurations, and uh, obviously we're also going to connect orbitals to the periodic table. So that's kind of like a, it's not in the title here, but that's the last part to this. So the first thing we're going to look at is drawing what are called energy level diagrams. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing really a picture representation of uh, an atom or an ion. Um, we'll look at drawing both, but we'll start with atoms. So typically what we're doing is we are going to be drawing out the orbitals uh, and where the electrons are placed in these orbitals. Okay, so first of all, it should be noted that we are only ever drawing things that are in their normal ground state conditions. So meaning we're not talking about when atoms gain energy and they're in the excited state and then they let off a photon of energy and come back down. We're talking about just the regular atom configuration. So not the excited state. So if you look up on the periodic table and something has 12 electrons, we're simply going to be drawing the 12 electrons in their placement. Of course, you should know that atoms, as they become larger and larger with more and more uh, electrons in the orbitals, the energy levels are going to um, get larger, of course, uh, and orbitals will start to overlap. So we'll look more specifically about where they overlap and how that happens. Um, but just know that as they get larger, what starts to happen is the sublevels kind of begin to overlap with sublevels of the uh, energy level below that. Uh, so we are going to represent orbitals, as I mentioned, in a diagram. So an orbital, again, so remember that's a region of space where we can find an electron, uh, can be shown in two different ways. We can use a circle or we can use a line. Okay, so this can be an orbital or this can be an orbital. Now, once we want to put electrons inside the orbital, remember that there are two maximum electrons for each one. We're going to use an arrow and we're going to point it up if it's a positive spin or down if it's a negative spin. So let's say we want to, and the arrows that you can use you can use a full arrow or you can use a little half arrow. To be perfectly honest, both of these are acceptable, just like both of these orbital pictures are acceptable. So let's say I wanted to show one electron inside this orbital, right? I mean, I'll use a different color to represent that. I would simply add in my little arrow or half arrow inside of that circle. So this is showing I have one electron inside this orbital or I could say I have one electron inside of this orbital. Now both of these are perfectly fine. You don't have to always start with the half uh, spin going up. Uh, you can start it with it going down. But what matters here is if I had to add a second electron in here, I have to make sure that they are going in the opposite direction. So that goes back to the quantum numbers that we looked at in the last lesson. Okay, so, uh, all right, so let's talk about this a little bit further. So when we are drawing orbitals, so I tend to, I'll be honest, your textbook uses circles. I tend to use the lines. So let's say we wanted to show an orbital with this line. Beside this orbital line, we have to say what type of orbital this is. So for example, I can say that this orbital is in energy level number one. And remember, energy level number one only has S-type orbitals. It only has the spherical shape. If I were to continue drawing in orbitals after energy level number one, we have energy level number two. So energy level number two has S, but it also has a P. Now, S has only one orbital, but if you recall, P orbitals actually have three different orientations. Remember, you can have the X, Y, Z axis orientation. So technically, our two P orbitals, this line 
should really have three lines. This goes back to our ML values. This is like negative one, positive one, zero, right? So the line is showing basically um, what the orbital is. Now I don't have any electrons drawn in here because I haven't placed them yet. So if we wanted to start placing electrons, there's a couple of rules that come into play when we're doing this. But I just wanted to show you the setup of this. Now, when you are writing this out, notice I started at the bottom with one S. You always want to show the energy going up. So meaning um, at the bottom, you'll always start with one S and you will continue adding in orbitals until you have enough for the particular atom that you are drawing. This won't make really sense until we start looking at atoms um, specifically. All right. So let's take a look at a couple of rules. So when you're looking at the diagrams, there are three kind of main rules to keep in mind. So the first one is the Pauli exclusion principle. So electrons must be placed in the lowest orbital first. Arrows can point up and down to indicate the opposite electron spin, which we've already covered. So for example, here I have my 1s, 2s, and 2p showing. And if I wanted to draw one electron in here, you must fill in the lowest possible energy orbital first. So I can't start at 2s. I have to start filling in my electrons down at the 1s. So you can see my little check mark, this one is correct. This is an incorrect placement. Now, I could have also done this as being, um, let's say I had one S and I have the half arrow pointing down. This would also be correct. So this rule is really just saying, you must place your electrons in the lowest possible energy orbital first, okay? And then of course, once this is full, you can move on to the next one which goes along with what we're gonna say here. So the Aufbrau principle, an orbital must be completely filled before moving into the next highest orbital. So actually what this is really saying, not only the orbital, but the orbital uh, level that you are working on. So for example, all of the 1s must be filled to its maximum before moving into 2s. The 2s must be filled before moving into the 2p. So if you can see here, I have the 2s full, but 2s, it has only one electron and the 2p already has another electron. This is an incorrect placement. I can only move into 2p once the 2s is completely filled. Okay, so the last rule is Hund's rule. When you have an orbital set where there is more than one line, right? More than one configuration or your ML values. So that's when you're dealing with P, right? P is gonna have three orbitals. D is gonna have five and F is going to have seven. You must have one electron placed in each, um, each of the multiple orbitals before you can actually double up and add a second electron. So for example, here I have two scenarios. So both of them have um, two, four, six, eight electrons. So notice here, one S is filled, two S is filled. So we have one, two, three, four, and then the order of placement would be five, six, seven, eight. Over here, this is incorrect because you cannot have an empty orbital on this level and have doubled up ones. So for example, this should be over here. You need one in each of the orbitals in that set before you can double up. The reason for this, keep in mind, is because these electrons are repelling one another. You're not gonna have them clustered together in these orbitals if there is space for them to actually spread out and not be so close to each other on that same energy level space, okay? So I'll give you another example. Um, 
Also keep in mind, see how I have this pointing up? Remember that if you have one electron by itself, it can be up or down. Also, technically, let's say I was going to do this with, um, let's say we were going to do this with um, six electrons, okay? So I can do one, two, three, four. Te really, it doesn't matter which one of these you begin with. What, what matters is that there's only one electron in each before you double up. So I could really do this, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is still a correct configuration. Or I could do, you know, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's also a correct configuration. So when it becomes incorrect would be if I tried to do this. One of these has to be moved over in order for it. Let's see if I can do that. Hey. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So here are your six electrons. This is also a correct configuration. Uh, and it doesn't matter where they are. As long as if they are by themselves, the spin does not matter. It only begins to matter when you have another one in its same orbital space. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at some examples of actual elements. Okay, so what this is showing you here is actually a template, um, kind of just showing you the order of energy that the orbitals will come into, um, I guess, placement for the atom. So notice this is called an energy level diagram. So when you're asked to draw an energy level diagram, you're going to be drawing something along the lines of this. Now keep in mind you are not going to have this template that you're just simply going to be filling in. You will be drawing it yourself. But then obviously as we're getting started on doing this, I have some templates here that we're going to be using and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's kind of freehand. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do an atom of magnesium. So looking at the periodic table, right, we obviously have to look up magnesium. So remember that we're only drawing the electrons. So we're looking at electrons that are in the orbitals. So there are 12 protons, which means we also have 12 electrons. So in total, we are going to be drawing in 12 electrons, remembering the order of the placement. So let's just put this here so we remember what we're doing. So we're going to fill in. Of course, we start with our lowest energy level, which is a 1s. So we're going to fill this. 1, 2. So we've used a 2 out of our 12 electrons. We then go to 2s. So 3, 4. So 1s is filled, 2s is filled. I can then move into 2p. Now 2p is going to hold a total of 6 electrons. But remember that the order has to become, you know, each one needs an electron before you can double up. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now that the 2p set is completely filled, I can move into the third energy level. So notice this is a 3s. So we're going to go, we have 10, so we need two more. So they're actually going to be in our 3s. So this is our full um, energy level diagram for an atom of magnesium. Now notice we have more energy, le um, energy levels that are here, right? 3p, 4s, 3d, etc. But we would not draw those if we were drawing this freehand. We would simply actually, this is what it would look like. You would do 1s, 2s, 2p, and then a 3s. So this would be for an atom of magnesium. Now this is, would be, this is what it would look like when you're drawing it on your own. Now notice I have them all just aligned with one another. This template has it so that you can see all of the S's are lined up together, all of the P's are lined up, all of the D's, and actually this continues on to do F's as well. It's just more of an organization standpoint on how you can see what is there. To be honest, when you're doing it, it has to be properly labeled anyways, so I can see what it is. And you're just gonna simply just put them in order of increasing energy from bottom to the top. All right, so let's go look at the next one. Actually, why don't you give this a try? Um, so pause the video and try drawing the energy level diagram for an atom of chlorine this time. <laughs> 